This federal election has suddenly got my very great interest because it's just got personal. You see, the Greens have announced a new policy. It's a law against me. Here is Greens leader Richard Di Natale at a rally of his supporters. We're going to call out the hate speech that's been going on. We're going to make sure that we've got laws that regulate our media so that if people like Andrew Bolt and Alan Jones and Chris Kenny and I could go on and on and on, if they want to use hate speech to divide the community, then they're going to be held to account for that hate speech. Then, in an interview just afterwards, Di Natale got even more personal. So, a combination of tightening media regulation in a way that it's making sure that the public interest is protected and also making sure that there are laws that protect the community against the hate speech of people like Andrew Bolt. You know, hate speech, I know, it does sound terrible. It's like I'm just sitting here hating, throwing all this hate around, dividing people deliberately, and I've got to be stopped by loving people. Loving people like Richard Di Natale? Anyway, wait, wait here. Because what if the Greens' definition of hate speech, what if Richard Di Natale's definition of hate speech is simply speech that he hates? No? I hate your speech. I hate your speech. That's hate speech. I hate speech. See, last month I let the Greens leader come on this show because I actually believe in debate, not bans, even though I knew he'd come on to attack me. And I asked him, OK, well, what specifically is this hate speech of mine that you hate? Here is the only example he gave. These are, these are your words. The more Muslims we import, the more danger we are in. I confess that does sound very confronting. But is it hate speech or just blunt speech that Di Natale hates and thinks we should ban? In that article, which you can look up yourself online, I in fact pointed out a truth, particularly looking at Europe. Countries with a high proportion of Muslims, uh, France, Belgium, say, had a bigger problem with Islamist terrorism than countries with smaller proportion. I don't know, think of Finland. Or think of Japan. Only 100,000 Muslims over there, zero Islamist attacks. And I said, in that piece, yes, well, I said it here. Confronting argument. And I know some people will hate it. But it's also an important argument when it comes to deciding our immigration intake. But as I also said in that article, we should bear in mind two things. First, most Muslims are in fact great citizens. And I really admire some of them. I mean, Labor's Ed Husick, footballer Basha Hooli. And the other thing I said we should keep in mind, it isn't all about numbers, because if it was, Germany would have an even bigger terrorism problem than it does. Luckily, many of its Turkish citizens seem easier to assimilate. Now, again, I'm not asking you to like this debate, but do you seriously think it should be banned? And what else would be banned under Di Natale's laws, which I fear many Labour politicians would now support. Would it also be a crime, for instance, to publish videos like this one from just last week from the Philadelphia branch of the Muslim American Society showing an event in which children wore Palestinian scarves and said they were ready to fight Islam's enemies? <laughs> The Greens could well say that me publishing that video on my blog, running it here and pointing out a dangerous culture could be hate speech, dividing people. On the other hand, 
you could also argue that it was only when that video was published in America that the Muslim American Society sacked the person in charge of that sick show. So from the discussion came reform. But when speech is stifled and banned and punished as a crime, then too often problems are left hidden and not fixed. They become simply too dangerous to discuss, which I think is often the big idea. Anyway, I thought I'd best tell you what's coming if the Greens and Labor together end up controlling the next parliament after the election. Now, I'm not saying that Labor will give in to the Greens' demand for laws against me and against Chris Kenny, also here on Sky, or against Alan Jones, another hate figure for the Greens, also on Sky. But laws like that is what the Greens will demand from Labor. And if they succeed, well, that's not good for me, of course. I'll be muzzled. At least I can quit and go read good books in my retirement. But for you, it's worse. Who do you think a best place to judge what you may read or hear, what's in your interests to read or hear? Do you think that really should be left to a Di Natale or the Greens or activist judges to decide? Or is it best decided by yourselves? So, please do enjoy the rest of this show while it is still legal. <laughs>